wish I was in Phoenix this morning because guess what? Temperature here is 32 degrees. Yay! And we're getting snow and a storm tonight. Yay! Then we pick up what is Gail going to wear today? Something cute. See what I really what I really like about her is underneath it says we because I always say you can't be unhappy if you're swinging, skipping, or singing. You remember when you're a little kid and you're in the swing and you go wee. That's how I feel about life. That's how I feel about life. Wee. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a progress update. See how it's coming together. My TV face is happening. All in our places. Bright shiny faces. Welcome, welcome to CBS Mornings on this Monday morning. I'm Gail King. I'm Tony DeCope. And I'm Nate Burleson. We're all here, so let's go to today's eye opener. It's your world in 90 seconds. Hello to you. I'm Gail King, co-host of CBS Mornings. Hopefully it's your favorite morning show. And I'm very proud to be this year's Cronkite Award winner. That's our report for tonight. Thank you for joining us. We'll all be black next, we'll all be back next week, and I'll be black. When I was in college, I got a part-time job at a TV station my junior year, and I fell in love that day of, of my production assistant job. That first day I went into the newsroom, they had breaking news, and the way that people were running around to get the news on the air, and I saw people that I'd been watching and recognized them, and I thought that was so cool. So from the moment I was in the newsroom, I was fascinated by the business, and I thought, by hook or crook, I want to get here. We'll talk to Margaret Brennan about his remarkable speech to Congress and what it could mean for the war. My why is, after all this time, I still love this friggin' job. I say all the time, all the time, I have a front row seat to history. And we are often the first people to tell you that. I, I know that comes with great power. I know that comes with great privilege. And it also comes with a big responsibility. And I take none of those things for granted. I do not know of another human being on the planet Earth who is more curious, more compassionate, more caring of other people's stories. Any journalist, watch what she does, watch how she listens, and then just know, you can see, you can hear the preparation she has. That is the lesson I take every day away from Gail King, is that you have to be prepared to do this. Bruce Springsteen, everybody! <laughs> I remember chasing, and I'll say groveling, for Bruce Springsteen for five years, and when he finally said yes, I wanted to do the hula, because we all know Bruce Springsteen, the boss, doesn't need to do any interview to sell something, but I think he just took pity on me. The first time I interviewed Michelle Obama and her mother, you know, they had never done an interview together, and they came and they were with me. Robert. 30 years of my career! And y'all trying to kill me! And then, of course, we have to say, everybody always says, it must be R. Kelly. R. Kelly would certainly be memorable, but it would be a good way to describe that. That was one of those interviews that went from zero to 200 in a nanosecond, and I, I never saw that coming. Gail has been able to prove through the incredible journalism that she's done throughout her career that she is a hardcore, serious journalist with serious journalistic chops, but also not afraid or shamed to just be herself. And Gail has, I think, paved the way for others to say, look, we do a serious job here. This is a serious role that we have, and we take it seriously, but we don't often, and we should not take ourselves so seriously at all times. And I love that she's been able to do that. When me and my band are together, nobody can beat us when it comes to storytelling. We pride ourselves. Those aren't just uh, words to us that have no meaning. When, it, we, when we talk about storytelling and original reporting, I, I dare anybody to beat us on that. And that has proven time, time and again, whether it's 60 Minutes, whether it's Sunday Morning, whether it's CBS Mornings, which by the way, did I mention we won an Emmy this year? Oh, did you hear? Yeah, we did. Very proud of that. And I just think that speaks to who we are and the values that we represent. I once heard that your reputation walks into the room long before you do. So I heard about Gail King before I met her. But when I did meet her in person, she overexceeded all expectations in the best way possible. Immediately, she took me under her wing and poured into me. And it is an honor and a privilege to wake up every day 
sit next to you on the stage that we are on, on CBS Mornings. Go King, I love you. I appreciate you more than you know. Congratulations. Someone told me that you won a Cronkite Award, and that is a very big deal. We have a Walter Cronkite biography on our shelf here in the studio because he was such a big deal to the country and to this show and to CBS. And I have to say, it is very fitting that you would win an award in his honor with his name because you are a very big deal, not only to this show, not only to CBS News, but to the country because you are one of our very best journalists. Congratulations on your Cronkite Award. Please bring it to the studio so we can all pose. As a family, we had to watch the news every single night. My father insisted on it. And I was a girl at the table saying, the news is so boring, why do we have to watch the news? And he said, because it's always important, my dad said, it's always important to know what's going on in the world. And guess what news we watched every single day? That's the way it is with Walter Cronkite. It's so full circle and goosebumpy moment that I'm working at CBS News. And my dad died when I was a freshman in college and I just thought he would be so proud that I'm sitting here at CBS News in the, in the network with a man he so admired. So if you have to say what do you embody, I hope that people trust me. I hope that people respect me. I hope when they're watching me on the news, they think, I, I'd like to think they're glad that they're watching CBS. Okay, Gail. <laughs> Kelly, yes. Okay. I'll put it out there. I remember the people that helped me along the way. That would be J.C. Hayward, who was a local anchor in Washington, D.C. when I worked at that station. Always very helpful, would take the time and critique my work. That would be Ralph Begleiter and Pam Coulter. I doubt that they even remember me, but I worked with them at CBS Radio, went out on stories with them, and they let me do stories. I would write the story, they would critique it, they would let me talk into the microphone and do my own story. You never forget people like that that have helped you along the way. You care so much. That is why you are so deserving of this award. And I offer you my deepest, my warmest, my most sincere congratulations. It's been a privilege, an honor, a pleasure every single day. Congratulations, Gail. There is nobody more deserving. Congratulations from the bottom of my heart for this well-deserved award. Working with Gail is like a masterclass in journalism and humanity. She has the ability to be exactly who she is in front of and behind the camera. We are all lucky to be able to work with someone as talented and passionate and accomplished as Gail. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. I stand on your shoulders as do millions of reporters, male and female, black, white, Asian, Latina, Latina, it doesn't matter. We all stand on your shoulders, Gail. Congratulations. Gail, I would like to say congratulations. You are so deserving of this award that is named after Walter Cronkite. You do what all journalists should strive to do, which is find the truth in any moment. And I am so blessed to be working with you. Congratulations, Congratulations Mom. Mom. You've been in this business for 40 years. I can't believe it. And you're crushing Longer it. Than us. I know. <laughs> and you're crushing it. And you're now you're on the national stage. We're so, so proud of you, Mom. You bring the light that we all need in the morning. And you somehow do it getting up at 3.18 a.m. It's true. Impossible, but you are amazing. This is so well-deserved, and we couldn't be prouder. We love, love you, you, Mom! I sit here at 68. Walter Cronkite had to retire at 65. He had to retire at 65. I'm not even kind of thinking about it. But right now, I would like to continue doing what I'm doing for as long as as long as the audience wants me to. 